Hello, everyone. Welcome to Diversity in Comics. Um, I am one of your co-hosts. My name is Glenn, and our co-host, our main host, um, is Gabby. We are so happy to have you all here. Um, thanks for being here. Thanks for taking time out of your, your schedules to be with us during Diversity Week. And we are going to get started with Diversity in Comics. Um, Gabby, who is our main host, she came up with this idea, and I'm so happy that so many of you all are interested in it and are here with us today. So without further ado, um, I do wanna let you all know that this is being recorded and it will be um, accessible later on um, af after we're done. So you can always come back to it. And yeah, let's go ahead and get going. So Gabby, if you don't mind taking it away. Okay, hi guys. Uh, my name is Gabby and I work at the Downtown Campus Library as a library technical assistant. And today I will present in you diversity in comics. So let's get started. So I'm gonna show you or share with you some diversity in comics using Webtoon as a resource. We have question and answers later on the presentation, but if you know about this program, that will be great, but I will show you a little bit about uh, Webtoon. So let's talk about a little bit about diversity. Um, so basically it's the, the different type of people the, different, the difference between all of us who make us unique, that's diversity. I just, we already know about this. I'm just gonna talk about it briefly about it before we start just talking about the Webtoon. Um, so Webtoon is a publishing portal launched by Naver Corporation in South Korea in 2004. Um, after several years, um, the, this, this app get popularity in Latin America and United States. And, and then line as on 2014, uh, show it as a web tool. Okay, so I'm gonna show you five examples of diversity in web tool. And I'm going to, talk, I'm going to start talking about a web tool called Always Human. So uh, another, uh, a fact for this webtoon is now they have a physical book that you can find. I'll provide the links in the presentation. And then if you need the presentation later, let me know. So the prologue for this one, this is a story about nanobots. It's a genetic engineer and two girls falling in love. Um, as I say, no matter how technology changes, we always be human. The, uh, the person who created this one is called Walking North. Her name is Ari, but you can find her on Instagram um, at that name. And then she's living in England. It, she, she says she likes books, chocolate, and other stuff. And she loves stories with diverse characters and world building. So basically, always human, as I say before, uh, it's talk about nanobots. It's a technology that you are able to change your appearance as many times as you want. So, and then we have um, a lady who she have in this universe, she have a disability and the, her, she cannot use nanobots. So that's why it, she say that there is a girl in a station sometimes and she can notice, but she never changed her appearance. And then in the story, they talk about how, you know, at the beginning she's so like insecure because she cannot change her appearance. And then the other lady, she accepts her as the way she is and they fall in love. And I'm not gonna tell you the end of the story, but it's something that you must read because talk about how they grow as a person, how they are able to, achieve their dreams and a lot of romance. So I have the opportunity to talk to the author of this um, webtoon. And, and basically for her, if you can read the description, for her it's really important that she can show um, diversity in their characters. So as I, she say, no one, no one story can hold up a mirror to every experience, but she thinks 
uh, in the world that we are cur currently live in, diversity in storytelling will encourage uh, marginalized readers to relate and engage with this story. So also, she thinks a truly diverse society will be one where all the people are welcome and feel like they are encouraged to fully engage with that society and that there are no barriers prevent this. So as I say, this is the, this is the cover of the physical book and I forgot to show you the, on the resource is the link that you can just go directly to the webtoon and start reading this story. Also the screenshots that I have here, the photos are from the first chapter and it's gonna be like this in the other um, stories. So what she wants to express about diversity in her own story, it's selling, it's selling that in always human is wish fulfillment. It's queer and multicultural in a way I hope the, for, the future will be. I want to imagine a future that I could see myself and I hope that various people who I don't often get to see themselves in stories. So especially in this kind of sci-fi story because it's like a future thing, um, are often quite white and straight and they feel like they belong in always human setting. And that's what the intention that she has, like showing other characters, other ethnicities in this kind of stories. So now let's talk about, about this one. It's called LUF or L-U-F-F. Um, so this one, it's, I, for me, it's kind of controversial because uh, I have a, a huge conversation with the author. She's he, from here. She used to live in Orlando and now she lives in Tampa. And the way she based her story was from the old Cuban, you know, the old Cuban dictatorship, everything that happened in Venezuela right now, which was really shocked because I'm from Venezuela. So when I was reading this story, I was like, I, f I kind of feel related because you don't have the chance to choose who you want to be. And that's why when, when I told her, she told me like, yes, that's why I base this story in this country. So basically love is like, I, I want to say like something like the social security that we have here, but more for find a couple. And then the, the acronym for love is law of unions, family and finances. So basically in this, in this story, if you, you want to have a good life, if you want to have a good education, a good, um, I don't know, a house, living, finances, you have to find a person to have match, a high match with you. So in this story, Bea, the lady that we're going to see if you continue reading this, she doesn't, she doesn't have an interest in to have a partner or anything. She just want to have like a, a good, um, good students, you know, and then basically she cannot start like higher university career because she doesn't have any match. So what happened here, it's, um, I'm sorry, she got matched with two persons and you can see it here. Uh, the person at the left is called Julian and the, call, the person of the right, it's called Daniel. And then basically they are completely opposite because Julian comes from a family that they have a low match uh, on, on the love match, but they are a loving family. They love their children, but they are really poor. They, they have a hard life because this matching thing. And in the other hand, we have Daniel, who her parents are, are rich or wealthy because they have a, a high love match. But what happened here is they don't love each other. The parents doesn't love and they don't love the, uh, Daniel. He will be abandoned and neglected the entire life. He feels like he, he's in, on the cage but because of that. So what happened in the story that she start um, meeting then and right now on the way the history goes, she didn't decide anything yet, but a lot of stuff 
happen. And I don't, I don't want to talk much about everything of that, just in case you want to read it. Also, um, this is the resource. In resource, you can find the link that you can click and go directly to the page that you can find the story. So when I talk to her, like, like describe diversity in your own words. So you can see the answer here. I'm gonna read just a little bit. So, well, she believed that it's possible to see yourself in a character regardless of their identity. I believe that allowing minorities to tell their story helps with the breaking of stereotypes and the creation of empathy from members of different communities, as well as showing the story that are specific to the unique circumstances these minorities are exposed to. So basically, when they talk about minorities, she talk about um, people in different wealthy situation or people with ethnicity problems and all that kind of stuff. So I think this comic is really, really, really complete to talk about all these things. And they, they, they also the topics that they put there is not only wealthy situation, also situations what what happened with somebody who is not in the loof program program gets pregnant other people like you know situations with queer people and what happened with them so i think it's really complete i think it's a really good resource to read and, and learn about it so we have a section this is a third example and then this guy uh, the, the author told me he is a transsexual guy who is on internet as a fashion blogger. This story, it's in Norway. And basically, as you can see how the, how the image look, all the characters are, are really different and really unique. So basically, what happened here, it's just like a normal high school drama, but everything get interesting when the ladies, like, you know, the, the, the classy ladies find out that the person who input the fashion in that city is a trans person. Uh, as I say, Netherlands, and then basically this is all like the first chapter um, images. And then when I talk to the author, he he's saying that in his opinion, everyone is diverse and different. But for the naked eye, I'd say if you put people together in different inter interesting heritage, like language, skin colors, body type, gender or no gender, love interesting, then you really have diversity grouping people. And that's what he wants to put in here. He wants to express like really different characters and put them together. And this is really long answer about what he wants to express in diversity in his comic book. And then basically he wants to show that not two people are the same way and we should celebrate our differences instead of trying to copy others to feel accept, which I feel is really good. And it's situated for, the story is situated for teenagers, but I read it because I think I feel it's really good. And I learn a lot about, you know, how to upset transgender persons and how to upset other, you know, different people around. So basically he say, I hope my comic can help making extreme diverse people look more normal in media. So when a uh, heterosis team first meet a gay person or a trans person, they will think more like in the line, oh, I seen this in exception and people like this actually exist. And this, that's why he wants to do that. So another one that I wanna talk, it's called Let's Play. It's a really good one. It's one of my favorite actually. Um, we're gonna talk about, the story centers in Sam. She is a, lady that she was she was overprotected by her parents because she when she was a little she was so sick 
and then she spent basically the mo the entire childhood in a hospital, and that's why she get obsessed with video games. At the point that she do she just not only play video games, she wants to create video games, and that's how the story start. She create a, a video game called Ruminate, and then that's where Marshall came on the scenery because he's a YouTuber, a gamer, gamer YouTuber, which is really famous. And he, um, he rated the Ruminate game as really bad. And then she started getting even threatness because the game for him was so bad. And then basically she have friends she went, she played with. Um, you can see the names over here, like Angela, Ave, and you can see how different all they are. Her best friend is Link, and he, at the beginning, you'd feel that he's in love with her because they spend, like, a lot of time together when his um, mother was sick. But then eventually, you know, Steve, stuff happened that I'm not going to talk about. So if you can, if you want to read it, so you can enjoy it. And then Marshall um, start play, they, they become friends because Marshall start living next to her. And then at the end, he start um, reviewing the game again, but playing in the right way. And then he figured out the game is amazing. And then we also see a lot of um, bloggers, YouTuber uh, problems here, how, the, how these people really feel about, well, not really, but most of them feel about it, like they feel lonely, they feel they're faking and stuff like that. So you, you will see a lot of stuff about there. And also you will see an overprotective father and mother and brother with, for, for Sam. And you will see supportive friends as Vicky and Angela, and also Ave is a really, really good friend from, for her. And then, you, as I said before, you can see there are completely different ethnicities, even different countries. Like, for example, Charles is from um, England, and he will become something really important in her life. Right now, it, the, the comic and the second season and, and I don't know what's going to happen next but basically that so monkey also is from United States um, and everything as I say before let's play is center in in, uh, in this kind of world like gaming world um, influencers world stuff like that so this is like the preview of the first chapter and if you can see the in the presentation, there is the game called Ruminate, which she has spent years making it. And I talked to the author again, and then she described diversity as the inclusion of much varied human representation as possible, whether it be the color of the skin, sexual orientation, religion, and even different types of able-bodied individuals. That's why you can see here people with different type of body and, and stuff like that. And I do not see making a black and white, but varying hues of a large spectrum of colors. So what I asked her, what do you want to express in your comic about diversity? And she said that she liked for her characters to be relatable, relatable for readers so it's easier and more fulfilling when developing an emotional attachment. I also want more inclusion in my romance comics, given that up until recently, most romance manga comics were imported from Japan and Korea, where there is little or no diversity. And there, if there was, it was usually considered a negative attribute to the character, example, meets plot, that when, you know, different countries go together, and I would like to move romance comic away from that concerning stigma. And she's really good. At the end, I will show all the social media from all the authors of these stories so you can look a little bit about it.
And then we have another, the last one, it's called life outside the circle. The person who create this one, it's somebody that I, I, I really like a lot. Um, it's a feminist trans comic artist. She's from Finland, he's from Finland. Um, everything that he created, he created like in Finland related. So also he wins the author of the Print Award and for short guy stories and the webtoon series Immortal Net. When he go to different uh, expositions and stuff, he always bring the books and he sign it for people. I think he's really great. He also love gardening and making like DOA stuff. So basically this is the first chapter preview and this is Yuha and Sammy. So Sammy comes from the city. He comes from Helsinki while Yuha comes from the, you know, outside that they call it outsiders where it's basically nothing over there in the cold Finland. And when they meet, they fall in love. And also they have a couple people in the story. They, uh, Juha have a, a daughter and she's really important in the, in the story. So when I talk to him um, about what he wants to express in diversity in comics, he says that actually he don't think like life outside the circle have it's perfect when they talk about diversity, but he wants to show a wide spectrum in LGBTQ characters. For example, um, Sammy, it's a transgender. They never say it in the story, but at the end, he 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 told us that Sammy is transgender. And also he wants to express the differences between a city person with an outside person. And then Juha is a low income single parent while Sammy is quite privileged. And also is a city dweller who get uh, money from the parents and stuff like that. But he also say, I think nobody needs to be perfect in every comic with the diversity, but it's important to think about all the aspects of it, not just sexuality or gender. So this is the author Instagram, Instagrams, if you want to follow them. And then if you have, sorry, if you have questions, we have a question answers at the end of the presentation. So thank you very much for listening. And I will let you with Glenn. He will express more books or comics with diversity. Thank you. So welcome to, again, to Diversity in Comics. Uh, thank you so much, Gabby. Um, she provided that, uh, the resource of Webtoons. And I'm going to be focusing on uh, comics and graphic novels that you can find at the UCF libraries. All right, and here at UCF, there are two places where you can get these uh, these books, physical books. And there are the, there's the uh, John C. Hitt Library, which is the main library on campus, uh, which is where I work. <laughs> and, um, and then the Curriculum and Material Center, the CMC, which is in the education complex. Um, right now, a little bit about myself. Uh, if you give me one moment, oops, there we go. Um, 2010 alumnus uh, from here, from UCF, a Bachelor's of Arts and Humanities, currently the Community Outreach Chair for the College of Arts and Humanities um, Alumni Chapter Board, co chair for the Association of Southeastern Research Libraries, um, and I'm on the Diversity, Equity, uh, Inclusion Task Force. I'm also a senior library technical assistant at the main library. So if you're ever at the library, come down and see me. I'll be happy to say hello, um, except for this week. This week, I'm actually working remotely. I'm doing diversity week, but be happy to um, speak with you all. 
Um, and just a little bit more about me. I enjoy all forms of the arts, musician myself. I have um, been in various different um, uh, bands. And one of my favorite graphic novels is The Wicked and the Divine. Uh, my favorite manga is Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> and I enjoy uh, anime and video games whenever possible. All right. All right. So comics and graphic novels, what are they? So of course there are two different types of mediums, but very similar. They are graphic literature, visual storytelling, um, and char characterized primarily um, with uh, sequential art. Um, why is the medium important? Because it increases range of expression. Um, you have of course words, but then you also have pictures and you get to enjoy the illustrations um, of, of these artists. Let's see. And then why is diversity important? For numerous reasons, but one of the main reasons is that uh, people gravitate to stories they can identify with. Um, and so it's important to include different types of people, all sorts of people in, in your work. And then also people want to learn about others. People are curious, you know, I'm the type of person that I love learning more about um, different people. So it is, it is so important to, um, to to, of course, as an artist, to be able to, to share different types of uh, different types of experiences. And in our next slide, let's see. All right, so a little bit more about diversity, equity, and inclusion. So um, Gabby started and touched on it, and it's a very important note that diversity is more than just race. Of course, that's the classic, you know, the, 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 um, the, the term that we're most used to, but it also includes sexual orientation, disability, even socioeconomic status. It's all the different ways that make us different. So it's so important to be aware of and to be sensitive to all these, all of the different types of, of humans there are. Um, uh, equity is more than just equality. And it's important here to, to note that equity really talking about um, creating tools or providing tools that helps everyone in their different ways to be successful. Um, and then finally, inclusion is more than just representation by numbers. It's including all different voices and perspectives um, at different levels of influence. So as an artist, you know, you, it is important, of course, to be able to, to talk about, to share your perspective and to allow your characters to, uh, to have, you know, to be represented with different forms of, of you know, people of diversity um, at different levels, you know, powerful and, and um, those who are, you know, who, have, who share different types of roles. It's so important that uh, people see that and, and they can, from there, they can um, be inspired by your work. All right, so I also looked at five different graphic novels and comics and they are all, again, can be found at our, with our, um, within our UCF libraries. And I looked at um, six different aspects that kind of helped me um, you know, review these five um, comics and graphic novels. First, I considered the drawing and art style, um, the way which is the way a story is illustrated to evoke a specific mood. Tone, I define it as the words used to convey uh, feeling or emotion. Uh, and then plot, of course, the sequence of events that unfold in a story. Themes being uh, the messages, ideas, or lessons a story conveys. And uh, world building, how the surroundings are described or shown. And finally, uh, perspective, the point of view the author conveys. All right. So the first graphic novel that I reviewed is called Hyperbole and a Half. Um, and I'm not sure if, if you all are already familiar with this, um, this particular graphic novel, but it is a, it's a great gra graphic novel because it goes beyond just, of course, you know, it's beyond fantasy, but it also, it, and more importantly, details the author's life. So this is Ali Brosh. And um, she became popular in, I want to say, the early to mid 2000s, um, starting off doing blogs, and her characters became memes, and, and then she wrote a book. Um, so, what's great about this graphic novel is that 
not only is it authored by Ali, it's also illustrated by Ali. And what I love about her art style is that uh, it, it incorporates both kind of like a stick figure kind of style along with like the, a tune style. So you'll notice that there are, that there are, um, <laughs> oh, someone says they love the book. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, yeah, that there are different, she, she, um, when she, when she's drawing, she'll kind of have herself normally in the stick figure in pose, but like sometimes her, her, um, other characters are, uh, kind of, uh, more fleshed out, you know, more 2D than stick figure, if that makes sense. And I apologize, I'm not a graphic artist myself, so I'm using the best words that I can. Um, but, um, what I do love about, okay, yes, the, her tone is very humorous and informal. She kind of just talks pretty real and, and it's it's hilarious. Um, the plot in each chapter, she shares a different you know story about her life. Uh, the themes I can say are self-acceptance and determination. That's one thing I love. Um, there was actually an article, she did a, an interview with Rolling Stone, I wanna say just a few days ago, where she kind of talked about, you know, what, you know, after she wrote the book, she kind of, you know, she said she was gonna write her second book and then just disappeared from social media. Um, but I love that she came back and she said, hey, hey you all, you know, coming, you know, it's still happening. And, and it's kind of cool to know that even though she deals with so many different things within um, within this work, uh, which is a part of her life, of course, um, she doesn't give up. And you know, that's such an important thing um, to, to know that, you know, you're not alone in, in the world, you know, when it comes to um, different, you know, mental illnesses or behavioral um, challenges and or disorders that we all, you know, face. Um, and that you can use your work, your art, to, to get that out and, and, and share your life with others and have other people be inspired. Um, and now regarding world building, she uses her words to add complexity to an illustrated scene. And again, you know, the, the style is, is, is mostly crude. She even says it herself, it's, it's mostly crude, but when, um, her, just the way she writes, just it's fantastic. It's a great combination um, of the two. Um, and then one of, the, one of the quotes that I identified <laughs> with so much was on, um, Page 35. So I should I should also state that each chapter kind of talks about like a different point in her life. And in the third chapter, it's called motivation. And she says, um, you know, most people can motivate themselves to do things simply, knowing that those things need to be done, but not for me. For me, motivation is this horrible, scary game where I try to make myself do something while I actively avoid doing it. And that was the most real thing I'd ever read. <laughs> um, and, and I totally can identify it. Um, and so, so yeah, so when it comes to her perspective, um, she's, she's diagnosed, she has been diagnosed with depression, and ADHD, she's very open about this, I'm sure you know, you can Google her and, and find her on social media, she talks about it openly. And for me, the importance of, of this um, is to value the perspectives of those with mental illness and or behavioral disorders, because, you know, we all, you know, deal with different things from, from, you know, day to day, and we, and we don't know, you know, what um, what you know the other is going through. So it's so important to um, to be able to pick up a book like this and kind of and read through it and see what, what it's like to be in the, um, in the mind of another person. Um, this book can be found at CMC um, and the call number is Graphic Novels GNBRO, which is the first, which are the first three letters of her, um, her last name. So that was hyperbole and a half. All right, next, let's see. Okay, so the next is a, um, a graphic novel, and it's actually a graphic history um, regarding uh, beat poets. So these were um, a group of uh, our, uh, authors, sorry, um, in the post-war era in America. And this book actually details several of those authors' lives. And it is, um, it's authored by, like, well, you can see right there, many different authors, of course, because there, there are various, um, authors that they're, that they're talking about, that they're writing about, um, and various illustrators as well. The art style varies, um, and a lot of it, what's interesting, tends to be what was kind of popular in that time period. So the beat period, I want to say, and goodness, I, sh I should have this somewhere, it was in like the, night, the late 40s, to the 50s, I believe. And so this, that, the, the drawing, the drawn style is very much indicative of that, which is very cool. You kind of, as a kid, I grew up with Dick Tracy. So um, I kind of see that in, in a lot of the, of the different stories and the ways, you know, that the, the illustrator, you know, presents the work. Um, and the tone is informal at times, serious at other times, but overall it's, it's dark, 
dark humor. Um, the plot, it details the lives of authors of the Beat Generation, we talked about that. Uh, the themes are resilience and independence because the Beat Generation um, of, of authors, they definitely shaped a lot of, you know, you know, contemporary and modern and modern writing. So these are individuals that went through a lot in their lives. And of course, that you can read that in this graphic novel, you see the, the, the kind of inner workings, the things that they had to deal with on a day to day basis, um, you know, periods of, of their lives where they just want to give up on their art. Um, and then they've kind of found the will to keep going, which is really cool. Um, so, so those are the themes that I found. Um, world building varies um, in, in some instances in the book. Um, in some of these stories, there are a little bit more, there's a little bit more complexity to the artwork and, and description of what's, what the environment and surroundings were like, and others, not so much. Um, so of the stories or the authors that are reviewed or, or talked about in this graphic novel, I chose to highlight the one of the story of Allen Ginsberg, who was both a genius and, a, you know, and, and had his challenges as well. Uh, but one of the most important things about him was that he was very big on fighting for equality and fighting for, um, you know, for the poor. And, and so one of the, my favorite quotes while reading his story was, you know, until his death, he pushed for equality of the sexes and to benefit the poor and oppressed. And, and you'll see that in his life that he grew up with uh, a parent, you know, one parent who, who suffered from or dealt with a mental illness. Um, and, you know, he had to, he wanted to find himself as he grew. So he, he went overseas and traveled and then experimented drugs and then got into spirituality. And then his parent, one of his parents passed away and that was a huge, you know, took a huge toll on him and it, and it caused him to, um, you know, of course, write some, some, some poems and, and started, he's then started getting into activism. So, you know, the, so this perspective of an artist, um, a son um, of a parent with mental illness all comes into play when it, comes to his work. And, um, and then the importance of this work to me is that, you know, it's important to value those of, of different sexual orientation and spirituality. Um, and that is something, sorry, I didn't mention that he struggled with well, his sexual orientation and, um, and he had to grow, you know, through that. And, he, and, and it's very important to be able to witness if you're not familiar with what that might be like, you know, to witness, um, to witness that. So, um, it's a great, it's a great uh, story to read, you know, the life of Allen Ginsberg, but of course there are other, many others in this book. And so I'd highly recommend it if you're into both literature, um, art, and into, um, into um, you know, graphic novels as a whole. Um, and this one I found at Main Library, um, call numbers PS, you see it right there. I don't need to read it all out to you, but it was on the fourth floor. Um, and I can vouch that that's a great um, floor for a lot of uh, for your art and your literature, you can get lost in there. Um, of course, please wear your mask while you're inside, but um, please come on down and check out all the, the different works that we have there. All right, so the next one I reviewed um, was I am Alfonso Jones. And this one was very, very tragic, very beautiful. Um, uh, and it details the story of a young man who you know who's into into theater and into poetry and you know, just an artsy guy but then gets caught well he doesn't get caught he's essentially trying to buy a suit and uh, an officer mistakes a hanger for a gun and, and he's ultimately killed unfortunately um, and so it talks about you know what you know the challenges of being a black uh, american man and what it means you know to be you know, you know yourself and your friends and family know you as someone who's artistic and and totally not the stereotype, but being charged, you know, with 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 being star, you know, being being stereotyped. You know, we we've all dealt with it. So, um, so the author Tony Medina, illustrator Stacy Robinson. I love the art style, graffiti, hip hop, and I, I put hip hop. Most people think, or at least rightly so, or feel that hip hop is a is a musical genre. But if you know anything about hip hop and go down that rabbit hole. Um, there's actually five elements of hip hop, one of which is graffiti. Um, I actually, in my undergrad, um, one of the last papers I wrote was on graffiti um, because I just think it's so cool, you know, the, the way that people can just express themselves um, legally or illegally, unfortunately, um, on, on different spaces with different mediums. I just think it's so cool. So 
when you when you read through the book though you you know that at least I got that sense of of a, a graffiti style a very hip hop style um, you know it's it's definitely not you know a 1950s or a 19 you know um, you know a west a, a typical western style you find it maybe say in the Batman comics or, or Superman or anything of that nature it's definitely it's definitely unique definitely hip hop um, and that that drew me in um, along with the story. And so, um, as we discussed, plot is about an innocent teen killed by a police officer. Um, themes are justice, tragedy, forgiveness, and hope. Because at the end, you know, there's definitely resolution, and it and it comes from all sides. Um, like Gabby said, like I don't want to give everything away, but it's it's really beautiful how it all ends up, and you're gonna cry. I mean, you might. I don't know. I did, <laughs> but um, but yeah, very 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 heartwarming. You know, heartbreaking, heartwarming story. Um, the world building, very detailed, very urban. And I, I love the fact that much like with graffiti culture, um, there's just so many scenes, um, black and white, kind of like gritty scenes of like the city. And it just looks so cool. Um, and um, yeah, it, very detailed. A lot, of, a lot of the different panels, of course, you know, with sequential art going from panel to panel, there's a lot of um, escaping or at least um, a lot of breaking of the panels and it's just very, very in your face at times, um, which is which is very cool. Um, someone says they love the artwork. Awesome. I'm glad you do. Me too. Um, and one of the quotes that um, was very touching was, uh, you know, Alf Alfonso was no thug. And this was made by his mother. Sorry. This is um, Alf Alfonso was no thug. He was a beautiful mind and a theater uh, student, a trumpet player, a bike messenger and he was my son. And so this shares the perspective um, of the mother and, and not just the mother, but also, you know, friends and family members of his, because, you know, that's the, the biggest challenge when it comes to diversity and, and things and being able to look beyond yourself is to realize that like, you can't judge people by their appearance, you know, you never know what, you know, another person's into just because they look a certain way doesn't mean that they're not incredibly talented, you know, not to say that someone should only be valued for their talent or their genius, but it's so important, you know, just don't judge a book by its cover, right? Um, and I believe that this story is very much, very much um, about that. Uh, so this one can be found um, at the, the CMC and uh, you see the call number there. Um, and I, goodness, I'm sorry, that should say um, GN for graphic novel. Um, in the last, uh, the first three letters of the author's last name, M-E-D. So if you haven't caught on by now, a lot of the uh, graphic novels, they're, they're, they're um, labeled GN <laughs> for graphic novels, very easy to find. Um, and so and we're gonna talk a little, little bit later as to how you can secure these graphic novels and comics. All right, next one. This one was very, <laughs> it was, it touched my heart. Um, so, Almost American Girl by Robin Ha, she also illustrated it, and it's, um, it's a memoir. The way I describe the art style is manga inspired, because it's not like straight up like manga, and of course you can, you know, define that there are different styles of manga, and of course I'm sure a lot of you know a lot more better than me that, um, about these, but um, in someone who reads a fair amount of manga, it, it, it very much is manga inspired um, to me. Um, it's, it's humorous, but at times serious, because she's, um, the whole part of the story is that, you know, she, she grew, grew up in Seoul, Korea, and then her mom finds es essentially, you know, someone she falls in love with, and then Robin finds that she's no longer living in Korea, and so she has to deal with moving to a whole new country and not being, you know, not being familiar with her surroundings. And so it's, it's very, um, it really, it talks about the challenges of being an immigrant and the themes are of friendship, uh, family, self-acceptance and determination. Um, of course, you know, she finds a lot of hardship um, in trying to learn, you know, trying to, you know, learn about being an American essentially. And, and so, but she also finds friends, which is really nice. It's not easy, but it's, it's a really beautiful process. Um, the, the world building is very interesting. So um, the illustrations are very evocative and detailed. Um, now you'll notice that the present day uh, depictions, you know, the pre her present day life is shown in very vibrant colors, but anytime it's a memory, there's a uh, sepia or sepia, sorry. <laughs> but um, it's like, the, you know, that brown, brownish, brown and tan kind of um, uh, tones and shades and colorings. And it's very, it's very beautiful. And it's interesting how she used that 
as a way to, you know, to, to, to tell her story. She used those different colors and, and, and things um, and, and tones and shades. Um, a memorable quote is, uh, in the sea of Korean people in my dream, I realized I did not belong to any of them without my mom. And so that's her having then moved over to America and then realizing, you know, well, who am I? Am I Korean? Am I American? You know, how do I identify? And so, you know, she, and she really identified herself with her family so much. So again, not going to give a lot away, but, um, you know, she has to deal with that. Um, and then the, the importance of this is the value of, sorry, that is the importance is to value the stories of immigrants and people, of course, who are coming here for the first time. You know, it's, it's so important to listen to people and try to be as kind as possible, you know, and, and to, uh, to learn from them um, as much as they would like to learn from you, you know, because, you know, we're all in this together kind of deal. So um, it's a really great book. Please check it out. I mean, there's so much press about this one too. I'm sure you could Google it, uh, but um, but no, definitely check it out. It is it is so good. Um, this one was also found at the CMC. Um, and here, give me one moment. Oh, thank you, Amy. Sorry, I just saw the, the chat there. Yes, happy to. Um, there should be. I don't know. At the bottom of my screen, you should see my email address. You know, you can email me directly, or or we can figure out a way to get an email out to everyone who's who's participating. And uh, I had someone ask regarding credit for your class. Um, we will make sure that that get, gets taken care of as well. So do not worry. We'll make sure that you get your credit for class. Um, and again, yeah, thanks for being here. Um, and I believe this is my final one. Yes, so it's called This Place, 150 Years Retold. Now this one was fascinating because it was, it's not just a singular story. It's actually um, 10 different stories that are reimagined in the past 150 years um, by indigenous people. So, so this is by um, indigenous people of America, of Canada, various, various different indigenous um, folks. And it, it took me by surprise because I didn't, when I picked it up, I just liked the cover, not gonna lie. Um, I know you don't wanna judge it by this cover, but the, you know, good artwork, you know, it does, does its job by selling. Um, so it just looked really cool. It looks very futuristic um, to me. There's something about it, you know? Um, and so I picked it up and it's 10 different stories. And the out of the 10, well, here, let me go in order, right? So uh, the, the tone is fairly serious because this book, or yeah, this book is taking, um, it has different indigenous authors who are sharing stories from their perspective. And the one that I chose that I'm going to talk about is called Peggy, where this particular uh, author, David Robertson, grew up with hearing about this, um, this famed war hero, you know. Um, and so it it's so important, it was so important to him that other people heard the story, you know. And so, um, and then he kind of uses a little bit of, um, what's the word, um, a little bit of a fantasy um, when it comes to, um, to re the reimagining of, of, of what happened. But, um, but it's fairly serious. Um, the themes are hope and transformation, world building varies by, by, stor uh, by story. Um, but the one that I read that I was, I was drawn to the most, it's called Peggy. And I'm going to read a little bit from, from the book itself. Um, and this is straight from David uh, Robertson. And he says, my work is often focused on representation, on how indigenous peoples now and in the past have been portrayed in popular culture. I also strive to find indigenous heroes who have been underrepresented in literature. Often I have used comics and art form that spans all genres and reaches all ages, genders, and cultures. I've known about Francis. Um, and the last name is spelled, I can't pronounce it, sorry. The last name is spelled P-E-G-A-H-M-A-G-A-B-O-W uh, for years on a surface level. I knew that, that he was one of the most effective snipers in history, but I wanted to know more about him. And I thought it was important for Canadians to know more as well. Drawing on several texts, including Brian McKinney's excellent sounding thunder, I learned about Francis Peggy, um, the man and the effect effectiveness of his work that extended beyond the battlefield. Comics are engaging and powerful, much like Francis himself, but as with this story, they often serve as an introduction and it is up 
to the reader to continue learning. There's so much more to Peggy up to his retirement as Supreme Chief of the National Indian Government in 1950 and into his later life. These nuances, struggles, and victories are fascinating. And I hope this text catapults you into that life and the teachings we can draw from it. And then it's signed Ekosani David A. Robertson. And so in this story, we have Peggy, whose his real name, well, his first name is Francis and his last name, um, I, from what I'm reading, um, his fellow Canadians, once he joined the military, couldn't pronounce it as well, so they called him Peggy. And so it just details his life and how he has a vision of when he's a kid. Um, and there's this quote that says, awake my boy, do not cry anymore. You are now a great person. You have been blessed to save your tribes from slavery. And from here, you see that he joins the military. He goes through a lot of hardship being accepted by the military and then having to leave his family and then you know, holding on to this vision that he has of being you know, a great person and saving his tribes, he goes on to eventually at the end doing just that. Not gonna detail, of course, how it happens, um, but it's so fascinating to, to learn about someone who is, uh, as the author writes, is one of the greatest snipers in, in, you know, in history and you know, how many of us know about this individual. So um, very great read. I highly recommend checking out uh, this place and, and you know, checking out all the other stories that are, are within it. Um, and then of course, this can be found at the CMC. So the CMC is the place to go <laughs> for your graphic novels. Um, so yes, and let's continue. All right, so yeah, so like I said, find more like these at um, in the CMC located in the education complex. Um, John C. Hitt Library, which is the main library on campus. Um, generally on the fourth floor, you're gonna find those graphic novels in the PS section, but you're always welcome to, of course, go to our website, library.ucf.edu um, to search there. Or, you know, if you're on campus, feel free to come by the circulation desk. We'll, we'll be happy to um, help you find those books um, where they are exactly. Um, we also have a brand new new books display um, at the, uh, the new student union entrance of the library. And you can find any new uh, graphic novels um, uh, there. So, so check that out. Um, there's also a research guide that you can, um, we can provide a link to later where you can check out to just see all the new items that are coming in. Um, now, if you can't make it to campus, um, don't worry. We also have interlibrary loan where they will deliver the items to you. And so what you'll want to do um, is uh, you can ILL an item. And if you have questions about that, feel free, of course, to reach out. Um, but we have the option of, you know, and interlibrary loan, I should also clarify, if we don't have a book in that you want that's, you know, at our library within our entire library's, um, you know, system, we can always um, do a you borrow or a request from another university. Uh, so don't be afraid if there's something we don't have, we can most likely track it down for you. Um, so be, you know, so use, use your resources, you know, you're here, you're at school, you're paying for, you know, your tuitions and things, use all the resources afforded to you. Um, so yeah, so come on, come on down and use them. Um, and we also have a great graphic novels, our research, um, research guide um, that um, we'll link to as well. I, I don't want to mess up our presentation here by clicking on this link, but um, we'll provide that link for you as well. Um, and these are a few of my sources that I used, books right found at our library that I used to kind of help me, um, you know, with my perspective or at least um, making this presentation. Um, unlike Gabby, I'm not like super huge into the, you know, comic scene. She's, she's the great advocate. Um, I just joined to support, but I learned a lot. Um, so, um, and then I also used um, these two, um, the, I believe that was um, Tuskegee University and our own um, University of Central Florida Office of Diversity and Inclusion um, web pages to kind of help me think about, um, you know, just think about diversity and, and how it can be applied to comics. Um, and, and Gabby is also stating too that Webtoon is free. So of course, download that, use that, you know, um, use your resources, please. Um, and then a final um, a, a kind of extend, I wanna extend an invitation to all of you, you know, students out there. We are um, curating a digital time capsule. So you can actually, um, you know, submit a picture, illustration, anything that you want, a poem, anything that you want, just to um, kind of express yourself. Um, regarding, you know, everything that has happened this year, whether it be COVID or, you know, racial in, uh, um, equity um, or anything else that you want to talk about, just let your voice be heard. Um, you can um, you can find that link on um, our library's diversity weeks page. 
Um, we can provide that link later. Um, but yeah, please, um, it'll be open until Sunday, the 25th. So go ahead and submit something. You know, you can influence how the present will be remembered. So share your message. Um, and then let's see. Now we are open for questions and answers. So a lot of us have already been typing in the chat, which is fantastic. Um, if you have any further questions, go ahead and um, and type them in now. We'll be happy to answer as much as we can. <laughs> and you know, we'll we'll take some time for that. Don't mind that it's almost four o'clock. We're very happy to stay around for a little while longer. Um, and if anyone else wants to um, chime in. <laughs> I don't know if Gabby or if um, anyone else has, you know, Amy, you have anything else to say? But we'll, we'll wait a few more moments. Don't want to, um, don't want to discourage anyone. Nice, like lots of great representation. Really impressed with the lineup. Never heard of many. Oh, awesome. Well, we're glad you're here. We're also glad that your, your, your professors told you about this event. Um, and that to say too, Diversity Week is happening all week. So tons of other events um, coming up. But yes, please come on down, you know, email us if you have questions about how to check things out or access things. Uh, yeah, we're happy to show you. Wonderful, learned a lot today. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, that's uh, good to hear. Oh, thank you, Amy. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4. Oh, beautiful. Good, 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 good. Yes, and Amy is the department head for CMC. So, so yes, please go see Amy. <laughs> She'd love to see you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, so yeah, if, if no one has any questions, I mean, I'm still gonna wait a little while longer. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, everyone. So happy that you all came. Yes, finished <laughs> love. Yes, yes, Gabby got me into to Webtoons as well. So yes, that's a great resource. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. You are so welcome. <laughs> awesome, very cool, very cool. All right, and then my Second to last slide is, yeah, thanks again. Here are a few of our other um, events here that I, you know, check them out. They're also found on our, our Diversity Weeks page. So um, so feel free, of course, to go there. So we have like crochet tomorrow. We have our uh, Stronger Together Showcase that I'll also be hosting tomorrow. We'll be hearing from different organizations and businesses um, around UCF talking about what it means to be strong, stronger together. So come out to all these other events. So many things. Tell your friends. Submit, submit to the, the capsule. <laughs> yeah, be remembered, you know. Awesome. awesome. You are welcome. You are very, very welcome. Yes, um, I believe that's Sergio from um, we have worked it out with our professors to make sure that, you know, if you're supposed to get credit, you'll get credit. Um, so um, so yes, that will happen. All right, you're welcome, you're welcome. All right, well, thanks again, everyone. We're going to go ahead and conclude the event. Thanks for being here. Tell all your friends and family about Diversity Week at UCF. And we hope to see you soon. Take care. Wonderful to hear, Emma. That's wonderful. I'm so happy. And hey, if there's anything we missed, you know, let us know. Feel free to email us if, you know, we can always highlight these in other ways, you know, in the library. We want to keep the dialogue going. <laughs> Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Amy. Okay, bye everyone.